much. Good morning, everybody. This is the oh. Wednesday, October 20th. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mayor. We haven't started the recording. Just a second. I'll take care of that really quickly. Recording in progress. Here we go. Sorry about that. No worries. Good morning, everybody. This is the Wednesday, October 20th, 2021 morning session of the Portland City Council. Keelan, good morning. Please call the roll. Morning, Mayor. Good morning, Commissioners. Maps. Here. Rubio. Ryan. Here. Hardesty. Here. Wheeler. Here. Colleagues, Commissioner Rubio wanted me to mention that she's absent due to her attendance representing the City Council at the Oregon League of Cities meeting. So she sends her regrets, but she is out in the field doing the work on behalf of the Council, and we appreciate that. Under Portland City Code and State Law, the City Council is holding this meeting electronically. All members of the council are attending remotely by video and teleconference, and the city is making several avenues available to the public to listen to the audio broadcast of this meeting. The meeting is available to the public on the city's YouTube channel, egovpdx, www.portlandoregon.gov, and channel 30. The public may provide written testimony to the council by emailing the council clerk at cctestimony at portlandoregon.gov. The council is taking these steps as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and the need to limit in-person contact and to promote physical distancing. The pandemic is an emergency that threatens the public health, safety, and welfare, which requires us to meet remotely by electronic communications. Thank you all for your patience, your flexibility, and your understanding as we manage through these challenging circumstances to conduct the city's business. That will hear from legal counsel on the rules of order and decorum. Good morning. Good morning. To participate in council meetings, you may sign up in advance with the council clerk's office for communications to briefly speak about any subject. You may also sign up for public testimony on resolutions or the first readings of ordinances. The published council agenda at portlandoregon.gov slash auditor contains information about how and when you may sign up for testimony while the city council is holding electronic meetings. Your testimony should address the matter being considered at the time. When testifying, please state your name for the record. Your address is not necessary. Please disclose if you are a lobbyist and if you are representing an organization, please identify it. The presiding officer determines the length of testimony. Individuals generally have three minutes to testify unless otherwise stated. When your time is up, the presiding officer will ask you to conclude. Disruptive conduct such as shouting, refusing to conclude your testimony when your time is up, or interrupting others' testimony or council deliberations will not be allowed. If there are disruptions, a warning will be given that further disruption may result in a person being placed on hold or ejected from the remainder of the electronic meeting. Please be aware that all council meetings are recorded. Thank you. First up is communications. The first individual, please, item 751. Request of Dr. Harry Bray to address council regarding campers and illegal activities near Gateway Community Me Medical Buildings. Good morning, Dr. Bray. Dr. Bray, are you unmuted? Thank you, and I apologize for that. No worries. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor Wheeler and commissioners and everybody else. On behalf of the three speakers coming behind me, thank you for the opportunity to present to you today and thanks to all of you for your service to our city. My name is Dr. Harry Bray. I'm a physician, a gastroenterologist at the Oregon Clinic here in Gateway, where along with our colleagues at Providence in the building next door, we provide a comprehensive array of healthcare services, including primary care, and multiple different kinds of specialties and have done for many years. Unfortunately, over the last decade or so, and particularly over the last 18 months, we've seen a profound deterioration in the conditions around our buildings, especially between the Transit Center and 99th Avenue. And my fellow speakers will be providing more information about that uh, behind me. We are here this morning to specifically ask the city to prioritize relocation of campers and the houseless to a supportive and sheltering environment to reestablish safety and security and cleanliness so that our patients, staff, nurses, medical assistants, and everyone else can feel safe and secure in our environment. 
Over the last uh, year and a half, we've made a lot of efforts ourselves, establishing a coalition with Adventist, Providence, with the uh, East Portland Police Department, with TriMet, to do as much as we can. Providence has promoted a better outcomes through Bridges Reach Out. We've had solve cleanups, we've added fencing and security, but we feel at this point we are unable to make things better and we need your help. And one of my colleagues will have a specific list of asks. My group, the Oregon Clinic, established our building here at Gateway in 2005, in part because of the access to public transport. We really were proud of Portland for its environmentalism and commitment to livability and public transport was an essential part of that. We subsidized our employees to use the max and bus lines and we were happy that our patients, especially vulnerable, relatively poor east side patients could access us easily. And that has been threatened by the deterioration of the situation here in Gateway with especially people on foot feeling that they are unsafe especially compared to people with cars. But it's more than just healthcare. We feel that we are at a place of intersection here at Gateway, of freeways and streets, trains and buses, like arteries and veins of the city which converge here in Gateway like a heart. And it feels like Gateway is the heart of the east side where public transport and healthcare come together. And we really ask for help in cleaning up and helping the campers and homeless around us to feel more comfortable themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it. And we'll look forward to the rest of the presentation as well. Next individual, item 752, please. Request of Dr. Elizabeth O'Neill to address council regarding campers and illegal activities near Gateway Community Medical Buildings. Good morning, Dr. O'Neill. Dr. O'Neill, are you unmuted? Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for having us and for your public service to Portland. I am Dr. Elizabeth O'Neill, Medical Director of Providence Gateway Family Medicine. We are a mission-driven organization. We are called to serve all patients, especially the poor and vulnerable. We are dedicated to our community here on the east side of Portland, and we're committed to our patients. In order to continue to provide high quality care for our community, we need the city to quickly establish safe environments for people to live and to ensure public safety. We come today to ask for your support and collaboration. This is an urgent situation. I have worked at our clinic now over 18 years, and it's only in the last year that I have stopped taking the max to work, not due to the pandemic, but due to physical safety. I no longer feel safe taking the max. Many of our patients also either walk to clinic or rely on public transportation, and they have felt equally unsafe. Tents blocking entire sidewalks, spilling into the streets, with active drug injections and drug sales in clear broad daylight, nudity, erratic behavior, these do not create a safe environment and literally prevent access to our clinic for those patients for whom driving is not an option. Access to healthcare is essential in every community. We're facing a public health emergency and a humanitarian crisis right outside our clinic doors. We need your help to reestablish a healing environment in our neighborhood where patients can safely access the health care they deserve and where employees are safe coming to work. We have two immediate asks. First, resources. We all know people need a safe place to live. Please hasten the work on the safe rest villages to give people a safe place to relocate. Please support grassroots initiatives that address the immediate need of the houseless, grassroots initiatives such as We Shine. We also request funding to build up the staffing for the better outcomes through Bridges program that Dr. Bray mentioned, so that 
better outcomes through bridges can continue to provide support to the houseless in our area until they are safely transitioned. Second, ongoing enforcement. Establishment of a halo or radius around the safe rest villages once they're created. Removal of tents, blocking pathways and sidewalks to our clinic. Cleanup of the human feces and the drug needles that are pediatric and our adult children, our adult patients see. Increased patrol in our area to deter active drug deals and drug use. To ensure quality health care for the gateway community, including the poor and the vulnerable, the housed and the houseless, with the dignity they deserve, we need your media partnership. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. O'Neill. Next individual, please, Keelan, item 753. Request of Sonia Bouchard to address council regarding campers and illegal activities near Gateway Community Medical Buildings. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sonia. I'm the Director of Operations at the Gastroenterology East. And I'm proud to say that the Gateway in the Gateway community, the Oregon Clinic in Providence see thousands of patients every year, many of whom are elderly and medically vulnerable. I'd like to paint a picture for you. When our, when our patients arrive at our Gateway offices, the first thing that they see is garbage, RVs and tents blocking our sidewalks, and discarded drug paraphernalia. As they transition from public transit or a parking lot, they're often yelled at, approached for money, and in some cases threatened. It's not uncommon for our patients and staff to witness drug use and physical altercations. Someone even attacked and damaged a car of a patient driving in the parking lot to get to her appointment. I'd like to share with you some quotes from our patient surveys. The area around the clinic is absolutely revolting. It is, very un it is a very unsafe area. I felt the need to walk very quickly to and from my car when I was getting labs done at the Oregon Clinic. I seriously did not feel safe. I'm probably going to switch doctors because I don't wanna go back around there again. My care inside the building was very positive in every way. It's just the outside getting to the office that was unnerving. The homeless camps and fence around the, the building was upsetting. We love our doctor and continue to go there even though we've moved out of the area. However, the physical environment outside the office has deteriorated to the point where it doesn't feel safe in the parking lot or around the building. Recently, I personally helped a patient and I transported that patient from the Oregon Clinic to the Providence Clinic down the street. And I was pushing him in a wheelchair and could not safely make the transition because the sidewalks and their ramps, their ramps were blocked by campers. We have patients who cancel follow-up appointments due to safety concerns. And we have others who are specifically asking for midday appointment to avoid darker hours. We have patients who experience challenges accessing their medical providers because the sidewalks are blocked. We meet weekly and collaborate with community partners to affect change, but it's just not enough. The lack of safe access to healthcare is very concerning and it's just not acceptable. This is unfair to our patient and our staff. We in the Gateway community have a lot to lose. We're at risk of losing important access to healthcare in our community and we're having challenges retaining our workforce because of safety and security issues. We're bringing these concerns to you today because we need your help. Dr. Shami is going to talk specifically about what we hope you can help us with. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your testimony. Um, colleagues, did you want to raise your hands now or do you want to wait till they're completed with their present? Okay, I think there's, there's one more individual here. Uh, so uh, those of you testifying, I know you're busy, but please hang around a bit because my colleagues definitely Want, want to respond. Um, next individual, please, Keelan, item 754. Request of Dr. Rima Shami to address council regarding campers and illegal activities near Gateway Community Medical Buildings. Welcome, Dr. Shami. Good morning. 
I am Dr. Rima Shami, and I've been at Gateway Family Medicine for 11 years. Providence Gateway is a primary care and immediate care clinic that serves more than 20,000 patients, 8,000 of whom are children. We are committed to caring for the patients that live in the Gateway community and to creating a healing environment in our clinic. The current public health and humanitarian crisis in the Gateway neighborhood is heartbreaking for both healthcare providers and for our patients. Last week, I spent a good part of an appointment with an elderly woman crying because she had not been to the clinic in a year and was scared for her safety on arrival. I attempted to support and reassure her, but just that morning we'd found a gun on the premises. We've also found knives, used condoms, and needles. I personally have witnessed active injection drug use, violent fights, and people defecating and urinating. Young children and families coming in for our care are regularly exposed to unsafe, disturbing conditions around the clinic as they enter. My concern is not that these families are inconvenienced, it is that they are traumatized. Providence has taken important steps to address the needs of our patients and surrounding community. Two critical programs I would like to highlight include, in 2016, we collaborated with Impact Northwest in our clinic to address social determinants of health, such as housing instability and food insecurity. In the last year and a half, more than 1,700 households were served by the Gateway Community Resource Desk, and this need is only increasing. Second is Providence Better Outcomes Through Bridges, or BOB. The BOB team provides street outreach in the Gateway community. They've helped transition some of the campers at Gateway by helping to have their cars fixed, connecting them to housing resources. The BOB team had been increasing their presence at Gateway, but due to funding shortages will now be limited. I want to reiterate that we serve families and individuals that are currently experiencing houselessness. A young man with schizophrenia I saw last week, when he walks in for his injections medications, he's sometimes talking to himself or moving in unexpected ways. We find a place for him in the clinic to wait without startling or impacting the health of other patients in the waiting room. I believe appropriate city partnerships and investments can allow us to achieve our shared goals, respecting people experiencing houselessness and creating a safe healing environment for those living in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shannon. Appreciate it. All right, so uh, colleagues, I think I have these in the right order. Um, I believe Commissioner Hardesty, you had your hand raised first, followed by Commissioner Maps, followed by Commissioner Ryan. I did there, but I've decided I'm gonna wait till my colleagues speak and then I'll come back. Very good, Commissioner Maps. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to take a moment to, to thank our guests who testified today. Um, I want them to know that I have heard them. Um, you know, a lot of people think the Willamette River is kind of the heart of the city, but if you take a look at where people live in Portland, Gateway is the population uh, center of the city. And I really think of the medical facilities that we're talking about today as being the heart of Gateway. Um, they, you provide incredibly important services uh, to our community. Um, and um, you are located at a really, um, I think, crucial nexus in our city um, and serve in particular folks in East Portland, who I think historically have been underserved. Um, I just want um, the folks who work, um, especially in the medical field out there to know that um, I have heard them. This is not the first time that this issue has at least come before me. Um, that's one of the reasons why when um, a couple of months ago when this this council was making policy around uh, houselessness issues. Um, I pushed for an amendment to specifically create some rules and boundaries around um, where uh, people can camp in relationship to medical facilities. I was hoping with that, that we, we would be able to get you some, use some space to actually serve your clients. Um, and I know, um, or I believe that um, Hucker has been out at a 99th and Pacific as recently as last week to help uh, um, clean up out there. I'm disappointed to hear that that intervention um, has not resolved all of your problems. Um, I, I recognize also that the problems that you face are faced throughout the city, but I do think it's also particularly important um, that we um, 
are good partners here. And I want you to know that I'll keep working on the issues that you have raised. The issues that um, I think I heard today um, include prioritizing, relo uh, prioritizing relocating folks who um, are camping adjacent to the clinics at Gateway, uh, more resources for uh, safe rest villages. I certainly support that too, and we'll partner with uh, Commissioner Ryan to make sure that happens. Uh, funding for better outcomes through bridges. I'll confess I'm not super familiar with that program. I look forward to learning more, and um, I'll ask some of my staff to reach out and find out how we can be um, helpful there. And then I also heard your request for um, greater enforcement of camping rules and uh, more help with abating, abating some of the negative impacts of camps. Um, I think this is these are important things and reasonable things that uh, this council should be able to accomplish. Um, I also want you to know that um, I believe over the course of the next several weeks, council will make some funding decisions before the end of the fiscal year. Um, I sure hope that we make new and significant investments in houseless programs um, that will um, make your working conditions and the neighborhoods in Portland uh, safer and more humane. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Hardesty, did you want to go? Uh, first, I want to thank um, all the uh, testifiers this morning for your very thoughtful and intentional presentation to the council. Um, and I want to say, um, A, um, a Gateway is my neighborhood, my community. I live in Gateway. Um, I also am a public transit user. Um, and have had really frightening experiences recently riding public transit um, because of people who clearly were suffering from mental health issues. Um, and, uh, and so what I know is we have a humanitarian crisis on our street and, uh, and the inequities that we had prior to COVID have only been exposed more. And Every community, I mean, it, you know, wants us to just make people disappear. And I'm, I'm using it, that very, uh, very uh, uh, harsh term um, because I know that is not the intent. We have a humanitarian crisis and we have to use every tool in our toolbox to make, uh, to, to get through this humanitarian crisis that we have. And I will say one of the biggest missing pieces is a lack of beds for people who need it, who are suffering from mental health issues. When I talk to police officers on the street and they tell me they take a patient who is severely uh, 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 acting out uh, to Providence and two hours later, they're back on the street because there are just three questions that are asked in that time period. And if they answer right, they know they'll be back on the street. So I, I don't want to pretend that we on this council today will solve this humanitarian crisis. Um, but what I will tell you is we need the medical community to be just as visionary as you want us to be. How do we get mental health beds for people who desperately need them? Uh, we don't, the federal government has failed, the state has failed, the county has failed. We could put as much resources on the street as possible, but if we can get people in beds when they need them, we're just spinning our wheels. Either we're putting them in jail, either we are, uh, we are putting them in unsafe conditions. And so we have work to do, but we need the medical community to really step up and help us find beds for people who need them. And it's a process. And again, I will end how I started. Thank you very much uh, for your intentionality. Thank you for what you're doing to make it safe. I have always lived in big cities. I've always walked around every time and night and day, but it is just as dangerous as 7 a.m. to be riding a max train as it is at midnight um, in any major city, especially in Portland right at this moment. We are in an economic crisis. We are in a humanitarian crisis and we need to act collectively. And all of us have a role. I'm gonna do my part as part of the city council, but 
again, I, I, we need the medical community to help us. That's the piece that we at the city can't do. We cannot provide beds for people who need them. Help us do that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hardesty. Commissioner Ryan. Yes, thank you, Mayor. And thank you, all of you who testified. I had the pleasure of meeting with your group. I was sworn in a little over a year ago and a few months in, I know I met with some of you. I think, uh, Sonia, you were in that meeting. And um, sorry to hear that um, nothing's really improved at all. It sounded very similar to the, the time that we spent together a year ago. Um, I want to also acknowledge how smart it is that you're a consortium and that it's great to see Oregon Clinic, Providence, um, uh, I almost said St. Vincent, sorry, Adventist uh, Care, all coming together. That's very powerful. And pivot with TriMet. I'll also pivot to uh, one of the uh, speakers. I think it was you, Dr. Harry Bray, acknowledged the Safe Trust Villages. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging that. It's a step, it's action. And it's difficult to move action uh, with multiple municipalities, with multiple bureaus. I've had more attorneys tell me why we can't get something done than I've had very many people tell me how to get to a yes. So I'm on it and we need them. And you know that we need them. And you also know that that's an on-ramp to services. And that's what we've been lacking on the ground is services. And I also want to acknowledge what you said about how important it is to keep it safe and clean around the villages. And that is what we have in the plan. And that is what we're gonna go deeper into, into more resources during the fall bump process coming up. And I hope that you will be here to testify how important that is. And third, I wanna say that we could sure use some help locating some land. And so if your groups have some excess land that could allow us to build a village for 60 houseless residents of the city with services, um, that will be good for the neighborhood that it's located in, and it will be a step in the right direction as we actually take action on a humanitarian crisis that we've been pretty slow to respond to for over a decade. We didn't get here overnight, and we're going to get out of this by partnering and knowing that we need to come together to solve this humanitarian crisis. I'm so grateful to all of you for being at City Council this morning. I really hope you can hang in there. We want your patients to go back. I'm a patient at Oregon Clinic. A lot of us use your services. We need you in the fabric of our community. And let's stay together. Let's keep working together. Thank you. I also want to share my colleagues. Thanks to you for testifying. Uh, it is now 10 a.m. I've already had five conversations so far this morning on this very same subject around different parts of the city, different institutions, different stakeholders, different neighborhoods. Uh, this is not unique to Gateway, although I agree with you, it's really bad in Gateway. Uh, I wanna thank you for the work that you're doing. First of all, uh, you and your colleagues at a very, very challenging time in uh, our city and our nation's history. Your colleagues are stepping up in big ways to help support our population during the time of COVID. And I know there's so many other issues that you're dealing with, challenges as well. And the last thing you need on your plate is to deal with uh, the issues that you've described today, the, the homelessness issues, the safety issues, the livability issues, the litter issues, human feces issues. Uh, believe me when I say um, I understand the pressures that you are under because I share those pressures. So here's what it's gonna take. This is gonna take more than us articulating what the problem is. And there are many problems leading to this and you've raised several. Uh, you've, you've talked about uh, mental health issues, you've talked about substance abuse issues, you've talked about uh, some of the issues around the lack of shelter and housing and alternatives. Um, those are correct diagnoses as far as I'm concerned. And, and you're the experts on diagnosis, so um, I would expect to know less. But now we have to have a clear-eyed view to the action required to resolve this crisis. The way I look at it is as follows. Number one, we need to agree on the goal. And my stated goal has been very clear. And I will also argue it's controversial. My goal is that there should be no unsanctioned homeless camps anywhere within city limits. That's my goal. But I want to pair that with a compassionate 
strategy to get us to that goal. Because I understand there are many people on the streets who are extremely vulnerable. As has been mentioned by my colleagues, as you've referred to in your testimony, our safety net system in this state is a colossal failure. And we need to be able to admit that. We are worst in the nation when it comes to providing acute mental health services. We're near dead last in the nation in terms of on-demand substance abuse treatment. Um, these are not accidental things. These are decisions that we made as a state, as a community over a period of many decades. And now we're starting to reap what we've sown as these safety nets are put under extreme pressure as a result of the COVID pandemic and other economic issues in our community. And the result is what we see on our streets. And there are people are there for a lot of reasons. They're there because the cost of housing is too great. Some have lost their jobs. Other have had health issues. There are some who are there because they're not receiving proper mental health treatment. There are others who are there because they are addicted to drugs or alcohol, and uh, they're not getting the help or the support they need. Now, what I'm hearing from the community is twofold. Number one, get rid of the camps, and there will be resources available in this fall budget process that Commissioner Maps referred to that will help us get rid of those camps that objectively rise to the criteria that we've established for removal based on public health, public safety, environmental, and other issues. Secondarily, we need to continue to work with our partners at Multnomah County around compassionate response. That's things like shelters, making sure that we have navigation teams that can go out into the community and uh, connect people with whatever services they need to get off the streets. And by the way, it isn't just mental health and substance abuse. There's a lot of women who are on our streets escaping domestic violence issues, and they're continuing to have violence perpetrated upon them in the streets. There are a lot of youth living on our streets as well, and they need specialized services. So we're going to continue to work with the county. And I was very pleased when the county offered up the opportunity a couple of days ago for us to slow down our fall budgeting process and work collaboratively on a response that includes camp remediation, cleanup, litter, graffiti abatement, uh, the kinds of things you talked about, not only in the camps, but everywhere in our public right-of-ways, and pair that up with the county's efforts around shelter, around housing, and other services that could be of benefit to people who we need to move from the streets into more humane circumstances. Uh, last, I want to end here, and that is we need not only to identify the goal, and I stated mine, but we need to talk about the nature of compassion because we don't agree on what a compassionate response is. And as I've said many times in the past, the status quo is compassionate for nobody. It's not a compassionate response to let people live in substandard circumstances on our street, nor is it compassionate to everybody else who are concerned about access to be able to live and work and play in the community in which they choose to live and be able to access parks, access public sidewalks, access their businesses, access their homes. We should have that expectation. So it's pairing resources like the Safe Rest Villages that Commissioner Ryan is working on, and, and I'm glad you support that, I do too, um, and pair that with community standards and expectations and enforcing those standards and expectations. Now, it's a little different between Portland, Oregon, and say, I don't know, Cleveland, Ohio, is that we live in the Ninth Circuit Court District, meaning we are subjected to different legal standards than other cities around the United States. And one of these standards that we are subjected to is the Boise decision that was adjudicated by the Ninth Circuit Court. That is a federal court. And what it says is we can't just go in and tell people to get lost unless they're creating an obvious public health, safety, or environmental hazard. We have to go through a lengthy process of an offering alternative locations. Uh, we also um, engage with navigation teams and social workers. Uh, we have to post for a certain period of time when we clean up a camp. We have to make sure that we bag and tag and keep 
the belongings in case somebody wants to, to get those belongings back at a later time. So that there's time and energy and process involved in all of this. And I, I, I'm going on a little bit of a terror here, number one, because we have a light agenda. Um, but I really want you to hear this, that this council does see the urgency and we do see the importance and we know the added pressures you and your patients are under uh, but I also want you to have sort of a larger context of what we have to do in order to be able to address the issues that you have clearly and correctly identified as being urgent issues. Um, so I'm with you. I'm going to continue to work with my colleagues and with other levels of governments. There's no I in this. There, no one person is going to solve this. This is a we scenario. Uh, this is our community. We all love it. We all are deeply concerned about the current state of affairs in our community. And I would ask you uh, to work with us as Commissioner Ryan had indicated, let's, let's put this thing back together again. Let's, let's be clear on our goals. Let's be clear about what a compassionate response is. Let's provide those services. Let's uphold our community standards and expectations and let's make this city work. And you're not the only people who testify on this. We hear, we hear from a lot of people. So a little bit of a rant, I suppose uh, I didn't have enough coffee, um, but I want you to know how passionate I am about this. this. This is what I think about all day and frankly, all night. And you will have me as your servant working as hard as I can to address this issue for as long as I have the privilege to sit in this chair. Really appreciate you being here today. And I appreciate my colleagues too. They're good people and they also want to do right by you. Thank you. Next item, uh, consent agenda. Have any items been pulled off consent? We've had no requests, Mayor. Please call the roll. Maps. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Hardesty. Aye. Wheeler. Aye. Consent agenda is adopted. To the regular agenda, please. Item 759. This is a report. Appoint Heather Lyons and Peg Malloy to the Portland Housing Advisory Commission for terms to expire September, 2023. Excellent, Commissioner Ryan. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, the Portland Housing Advisory Commission is the city's primary public forum for discussion of affordable housing policy, strategy, and resources. PHAC, as it's called, members must take a comprehensive approach to housing policy and strategy, rising above their individual interests and affiliations. Our appointees today bring valuable expertise to the housing conversation, and I'm thankful for their willingness to serve and look forward to their insights and guidance on the housing as, as the housing commissioner. Director Callahan from the Portland Housing Bureau will now share a brief presentation about why these recommend, recommendations are right for the City of Portland and for the Portland Housing Bureau. Director Callahan, please take it away. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Uh, good morning, Mayor and Commissioners. Shannon Callahan of the Portland Housing Bureau. I'm very pleased to be here today to seek your confirmation for two appointments to the Portland Housing Advisory Commission, um, Heather Lyons and Peg Malloy. Heather is Regional Director of the Corporation for Supportive Housing. Her work focuses on working with state and local agencies to promote systems and policy changes to create and sustain supportive housing. Heather's extensive experience with policies and programs addressing community needs across the housing continuum, including experience with casework and emergency shelters, domestic violence programs, and working with those recovering from addiction. Her expertise in supportive housing will be a valuable addition to the work of the Advisory Commission and to the Housing Bureau as we work to weave more supportive housing um, into our affordable housing developments to help house those who are living on our streets or in our shelters currently. Uh, Peg Malloy is the founder and executive director of the Portland Housing Center, a local lender providing homeownership counseling, education, and financial services. Peg's background includes co-managing a neighborhood credit union, writing guidelines for personal loans, making loans for business expansions, and designing a gap financing program for special needs residential buildings. Peg has also developed two culturally specific financial curricula for the Portland Housing Center. Her expertise in all facets of home ownership 
will be a vital addition to reaching our shared goals of providing economic and opportunity economic opportunity and stability to Portland families through home ownership. Um, Peg and Heather are here um, this morning on the council call and we appreciate their willingness to serve. And with that, I um, would ask for your support for their appointment. Thank you, Director Callahan. Mayor, I think that's uh, all we have. So I'll turn it back to you. I'm sorry. Um, uh, would they like to say a couple of words since they're here? That would be that would be wonderful, Commissioner. Oh, I, thanks, Commissioner. I didn't hear that part. I don't see their names anywhere on there. So uh, I see Heather. Oh, you do. Oh, and Heather. <laughs> And Peg was on the call earlier, but I believe she had to jump off. So Heather, if you, okay. you want to say- Yeah, Heather, we'd love to hear from Yeah. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Um, Mayor and commissioners, good morning. Um, I'm just really pleased to be here and to join the Portland Housing Advisory Committee, or PHAC. Um, and as a director with the Corporation for Supportive Housing, or CSH, I, I clearly have a passion for ensuring that highly impacted people have access to housing and services to help recover and thrive. Um, I'm also a firm believer of creating deeply affordable housing in the community. And while I oversee a region that includes five states, Portland is my home and it's wonderful to be part of something in my backyard. Uh, I just wanna add that I'm also a big fan of the Portland Housing Bureau and all the work they've done to increase affordable housing and implement policies that address equity. I'm constantly sharing the North Northeast uh, preference right to return policy with colleagues who experience a backlash of not being able to provide housing for black and brown people in their communities. So it's one of the many steps that are critical to take if we want to change the disproportionality of BIPAC who express, I'm sorry, who experience houselessness and housing insecurity. So those are my comments and thank you very much. Thank you, Heather. We really appreciate your stepping up. Again, this is <laughs> one, of, one of many times. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Colleagues, any further comments? Um, very good. With that, I'll entertain a motion to accept the report. So, so Commissioner uh, Ryan moves. Commissioner Hardesty seconds. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Max. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Heather and Peg for their service to our community. Um, I vote aye. Ryan. Yes, thank you, Heather. Thanks for being here. And thank you, Peg. Um, great appointments. Uh, good job, uh, Director Callahan, uh, shepherding this along. I vote aye. Hard to see. Uh, excellent recommendations, Commissioner Ryan. Uh, thank you so much, Heather. You're going to bring so much uh, to uh, this work. Um, as well as your other new colleague. Um, I, I am impressed by the depth of your knowledge and I'm very happy to be able to vote aye. Wheeler. Well, this is one of the thorniest issues. Obviously, it's one of the most important issues facing our community and, and a lot of other West Coast cities. Uh, Heather, since you're here, I'll, I'll just direct this to you for the moment. Um, thank God <laughs> you're, you're interested <laughs> In doing this, we, we need the best minds in our community to work with the council and to work with, with others in our community to help us resolve this crisis. I think you just heard the last half an hour, uh, or at least some portion of it, where um, we have people in our community who are deeply, deeply concerned about what they described as a humanitarian crisis and what we know is a humanitarian crisis, and housing is the key component of all of this. And so to have somebody with your experience and expertise uh, coming in very clear eyed, knowing what you're getting into uh, with deep experience working with with the city government, I just can't tell you how much I personally appreciate it. Thanks to you. Thanks to Peg. I'm very happy to support these appointments. Let us know if there's anything you need from us or any way we can be helpful to you and Shannon and Commissioner Ryan, the commissioner in charge, will certainly do their parts. Uh, but let us know how we can be better partners for you as well. I vote aye. The report is approved. The appointments are also approved. Thank you. Uh, believe it or not, colleagues, the last item on our agenda today is 760, an emergency ordinance. 
pay settlement of Francis Gaiman lawsuit in the sum of $15,000 involving the Portland Housing Bureau. Commissioner Ryan. Yes. Um, yeah, our, we're requesting that we refer this back to our office of pulling information. Correct. Without objection, uh, 760 is pulled back to Commissioner Ryan's office. And that's it, colleagues. You get some time back this morning. We are adjourned. Thank you, Keelan.